So I'm sure a lot of you bought new TVs over the past few years, upgrading old TVs in the house with new 4K models, replacing TVs that have died maybe, maybe you picked up a new one on Black Friday. Well, there's a chance your new TV may already be outdated. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the new TV standard they're calling Next Gen TV and go over what is Next Gen TV, what does it mean for TV viewers, do you need it, and how can you upgrade to Next Gen TV without buying a whole new TV? So I'm sure a lot of you are cable cutters like I am who are relying on an antenna for your local stations to supplement your streaming services. It's a great option if you live within the range of a broadcast signal and actually delivers a better signal than a cable box would. Unless you already own a next-gen capable TV, the signal you receive is current-gen. So there's a technical term for next-gen TV, which is called ATSC 3.0, and the current standard is called ATSC 1.0. But the electronics industry marketing folks prefer to go with the simpler term next-gen TV, as it rolls off the tongue a bit better than ATSC 3.0. So we'll go with next-gen TV for this video. So for the current gen standard for watching your local stations without cable, you receive broadcast signals over the air in HD, which look great. But with the current generation, you aren't receiving channels in the glorious 4K resolution that your TV is technically capable of. And that includes cable TV. Cable boxes don't deliver 4K yet. So the reality is your 4K TV is only going to display 4K with streaming services like Netflix or Amazon Prime, etc. And even then, a majority of the content is not in 4K. So Next Gen TV is an upgrade to the television broadcast protocol and it's starting to roll out across the USA and even other countries like South Korea and Brazil. So let's talk a little bit about what next-gen broadcast TV has to offer over the current standard. The biggest difference is that it is capable of 4K resolution. This means that it can deliver a ton more pixels to your TV, hopefully resulting in a super sharp, vivid image. Next-gen supports up to 3840 by 2160 pixels in progressive scan, which is the 4K standard, versus 1920 by 1080 interlaced or 720 by 540 progressive scan pixels for normal HD. So 4K, that means 8 million pixels for one frame of video versus 2 million pixels for a frame of HD video. So of course, more pixels are better. You get a sharper, more detailed image, which is huge. The next big upgrade in the capability of next-gen TV is HDR, or High Dynamic Range. HDR, in its essence, delivers better contrast and richer colors, brighter whites, deeper blacks, colors that are more vivid and accurate. It can deliver a better looking image. Most modern TVs are capable of some form of this standard, but again, only via streaming services. You might have noticed a notification on your TV when watching HDR content via Netflix or one of the other streamers. There's a bunch of technical stuff that needs to happen to deliver an HDR signal to your TV that I don't fully understand. And there are several different formats of HDR, like Dolby Vision and HDR10, but all in all, the result is a better looking image. And we all want that, right? Unless, of course, you're a total nostalgia nerd who still watches VHS copies of Police Academy movies on VHS to get that essential 80s experience, then, well, who am I to stop you? Whatever floats your boat. Hell, break out your RCA video disc player for the true vintage home movie watching experience. You be you, but I digress. Another component to the new standard is how these pixels get delivered to your house. In order to funnel that much digital data to your TV set over the air, there has to be data compression involved to make that transmission feasible. So the current gen TV uses a compression standard called H264, H.264. Next gen uses H265 or H.265, also called HEVC, which stands for High Efficiency Video Coding. In simple terms, 
H265 is a more efficient method of compression that enables your TV to look better by the time it makes it to your screen. This takes more processing power on the broadcast side to encode the image as well as on the reception side to decode, but thankfully the chips that can do this heavy math in real time are now widely available for the manufacturers to integrate into their products. So again, the end result of this new compression scheme is a better image to your TV. So NextGen promises a lot for delivering better images, but what about sound? Yep, getting improvements there as well. So NextGen TV includes immersive audio from what I understand is similar to Dolby Atmos or DTS-X. Sounds can be placed in a 3D environment if you have a compatible sound system. Also, NextGen TV includes the ability to adjust the volume of the dialogue track separately. So that can be really useful. It gives you the ability to select from several different audio tracks, like additional commentary or audio description tracks for the visually impaired. Just like the improved video compression, the audio compression will be improved as well. NextGen TV uses MPEG-H 3D audio or Dolby AC4 compression standards. And again, the results should be richer improved sound with higher highs, lower lows, and better clarity and detail. NextGen also includes built-in loudness management to keep those annoyingly loud commercials at bay. So that covers improved pictures and sound, but what else does NextGen TV have to offer? So another new feature with NextGen TV is the capability of interactive TV. Let's say you're watching a drama series. You might be able to click on a link that would take you to a behind the scenes segment that would then stream to your TV. You might be watching a daytime talk show, like let's say Kelly Clarkson's interviewing a celebrity uh, about their new book. They could include an interactive link that you could click on and immediately purchase the book. Your TV is going to be connected to the internet most likely, so it can easily manage a basic transaction like that. And of course, there's potential for commercials to allow you to purchase products or receive more info from advertisers. This stuff makes marketing folks have wet dreams but gives privacy advocates nightmares. So another feature of NextGen TV is DRM, or Digital Rights Management. This is a win for the TV networks trying to curtail piracy, but it's not a win for nerds like me. I used to use a device called an HD Home Run, and that would let me record shows off the air on my computer so that I could watch them later and I used to copy them over to my server and that way I could watch them on any TV in the house. It was great, it worked pretty well and eventually my device died and I never bothered buying a replacement. I'm not an expert on DRM by any means, but from what I've read with NextGen, the networks are implementing DRM encoding so that you can't transport files from one device to another. You can record shows on a device equipped to receive the DRM encoded signals, but you can't copy them and play them back on a different device as I understand it. And you have to have your TV connected to the internet to decrypt that DRM signal. This could be a deal breaker for the people who prefer that their TVs are not connected to the internet and sharing who knows what with the manufacturer and anyone who pays for the data that their TV is collecting. Right now, not everyone is broadcasting next-gen using the DRM signals. Some stations are still broadcasting next-gen without DRM. It's still too early to tell how this stuff is going to play out. So, a couple of other things with next-gen TV. Apparently, next-gen TV works a lot better for providing TV signals to vehicles. I'm not sure how many of you people are watching broadcast TV on your morning commute, but Apparently, NextGen is much better for that than the current standard. Additionally, there are plans to use NextGen TV to broadcast real-time data to cars for things like traffic information and other real-time data streams. It's an interesting concept, but I would think cell phone 5G wireless would be sufficient for that. I don't know. Again, I'm not an expert on this stuff. So we know that NextGen TV has a lot to offer, but the current issue is that the networks aren't really taking advantage of the new features like HDR and 4K yet. Fox recently broadcast the Super Bowl in 4K, but it turns out they really just up 
1080 to 4K, so it wasn't really truly broadcast in 4K. So then the question is, is it worth upgrading? And what's the best way to upgrade? Again, it's still early to really see how things are going to shake out. If you're a true video file and you need to have the latest and greatest and you want the ultimate picture and have the budget, by all means, get a TV that has a next-gen tuner built into it. Hopefully, the networks will begin to deliver more and more content in the new standard. Expect the drama shows to be the first that will adopt 4K and HDR as those shows are most likely being finished using these high-end formats anyway for use on the streaming platforms. Comedies will likely come next, and last will be the talk shows to upgrade to the new format. So, if you're going to buy a new TV, you should probably consider getting one with a next-gen tuner. Just to future-proof your setup. Interestingly enough, LG actually stopped production of next-gen TVs due to a licensing royalty dispute over the format. If you already have a nice new shiny 4K TV, but it doesn't have a next-gen tuner built into it, don't despair. There's a relatively easy solution for you. Which brings me to the sponsor of this video. A company called GT Media was nice enough to reach out, and they sent me their next-gen tuner box called the GT Media Converter X1. This is an Android-based TV box that has a built-in next-gen tuner with a DVR. It connects to the internet and downloads a program guide just like your TV or cable box would. Um, and because it's Android, you can install other apps on it as well. It comes with a version of Kodi built into it. You plug your antenna right into the back of the box and scan for your broadcast signals and it can receive next-gen signals as well as ATSC 1.0 or standard-gen signals. Uh, I'm going to make another video that will be a more in-depth, uh, deep dive into this uh, GT EA Converter X1, but it seems to work well, it does the job, and it's a great way to test the waters of next-gen TV. I'll post a link to it in the description. It's not an affiliate link, I don't make any money from it. The only sponsorship I've received from them is they sent me their tuner box for free. There are several competing next-gen tuner boxes starting to hit the market, so you'll have some options if you do decide to upgrade, upgrade to next-gen TV via a tuner box like this. The uh, TV networks have decided to simulcast next-gen and standard HD till at least 2027, probably longer, so you have some time. It's not urgent that you're going to have to upgrade, but it's good to keep an eye on things. There's definitely a bit of discourse when it comes to next-gen TV. Is this really what we want as consumers? Let me know your thoughts on next-gen TV in the comments. Are you going to upgrade? Have you already upgraded? Also, look for a more detailed review of the GT Media X1 Converter Box in a future video. Thanks for watching.